Okay, now we'll move into the next item on our agenda, which is a presentation uh, from Mary Shortle, President of the Federation, Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Labor. And Mary has pre-recorded, I think, her presentation, correct? Okay, so Mary um, has been presentation of the Federation of Labor for, um, for I think is four or six years. Um, time flies when you're having fun, right? You know how, you know that when you, when you get the time all mixed up. She is a great advocate on behalf of workers in Newfoundland and Labrador, and not just unionized workers who are members of the Federation of Labor, but all workers. Because we know as unions uh, that when we lift up our members, we also uh, lift up members uh, who aren't union members. And sometimes we have to fight as unions for those who do, who do not have uh, the advantage uh, and privilege of being part of a union. Um, just as uh, the Federation of Labor is is directly involved in the uh, 15 and Fairness campaign, trying to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And not all of these workers are unionized. In fact, many of them aren't. But as a federation, we believe that all workers deserve a, a fair wage and a living wage. So I'm very pleased that Mary could join us this morning. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Mary Shortle, President of the Federation of Labor. Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for the invitation to bring greetings on behalf of our Executive Council and 70,000 members of your Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Labor. It seems like forever, and so much has happened since we last were together. It's hard to believe, really. I'm so happy to be here, even virtually, among folks who work tirelessly, giving so much of themselves, sometimes against incredible odds, to make a difference in their workplaces, in their union, and in their communities. Nurses have always contributed to improving the public's health during times of crisis right back to the days of Florence Nightingale and through some of the world's most recent infectious disease outbreaks throughout our history. Our society has always depended on hardworking public sector workers, but never so much as over the past nine months. What a tumultuous and surreal time it's been. While the rest of us stayed home and stayed safe during the pandemic, healthcare and other frontline workers dealt with containment, testing and treatment of those who contracted the virus. Others working in long-term care ensured the sick and elderly were kept safe, healthy, and often doing so without adequate PPE. In addition, public sector workers provided other essential services as well, which kept our houses warm and lighted, our water flowing, our mail delivered, our garbage collected, and our citizens and communities healthy, safe, educated, and informed. Still others made sure that those economically impacted received subsidies and benefits that they or their businesses needed to help to get through this public health crisis. Public sector workers did this all at great risk to their own health and that of their families. That's what you did. This despite being subject to many years of austerity budgets, cutbacks and wage freezes. And yet here you are, working around the clock, quite literally, saving all our lives. On behalf of our Federation, I want to acknowledge your ongoing contribution and heroic work, despite incredible odds and at great risk to yourselves and your families. You really are working class heroes, every single one of you. Thank you for what you do. I know your work has taken a huge toll on you and your families, and this pandemic has shown a light on the many issues that I know you will be talking about during your convention and working on going forward in your political work. I want you to know the 70,000 members of our Federation stand with you. I want to say thank you to your outgoing president. It's hard to believe that Debbie's retiring after 24 years of serving as your president. 
I read one of her quotes in your recent newsletter from her inauguration in 1996, when she talked about her vision as an advocate. She said it was important to look beyond an individual patient and to advocate for a healthcare system that delivers quality healthcare and allows us to provide quality nursing care to the public. That mandate is as crucial today as it was 24 years ago. And Debbie has always been a passionate and effective advocate for her members and her profession and for the people who need and deserve a quality healthcare system. She has made a difference. It has been an absolute honor to work with her. Our Federation has been stronger because of RNUNL's voice at our table. Debbie, you can be so proud of your accomplishments and confident that you have mentored and made space to leave this organization in great hands. All our best wishes to you, my sister. I also want to congratulate your incoming president, Yvette Coffey, and new and returning board members. I look forward to working with Yvette, learning from her, and advocating with her. I have seen Yvette in action, and I'm excited to have her experience, energy, and knowledge at our executive council table. And by the way, we share two passions, our activism, and I also have my motorcycle license and I ride my own bike. I see a biker babe ride in our future, Yvette. Your Federation has been busy carrying out the mandate that our members gave us through the delegates at our convention last December. But what we didn't know then is that we would have to find new ways of doing that. But we are doing just that, just like you are. Zoom has been our new best friend. It's funny, after so many months of dressing professionally from the waist up, it was a hard and somewhat painful transition to non-elastic waistbands and heels after flannel jammy bottoms and comfy slippers. Unfortunately, our labor choir, which some of you have been involved in, has had to take a break during the pandemic. But our intention is to have it up and running and bigger and better than ever for our 2022 convention. Stay tuned. Our standing committees have been meeting virtually and have developed their strategic plans between now and our 2022 convention. We continue to work on how we can make space in our organization for those who have historically been missing, young workers, black, indigenous, people of color, people with disabilities, LGBTQ2S+. Your union has led the way on some of that work and have inspired us to do the same. After months of consultation, we prepared and presented our submission to the WCB Statutory Review Committee, who are now in the process of writing their report and recommendations to government. I have to say, I was disappointed in Workplace NL's recent decision to give a 21 cent assessment reduction back to employers now and for the next few years to reduce the surplus in the injury fund. The timing of this announcement, for which employers have been advocating for some time, in my opinion, undermines both the process of the review as well as the intent of the workers' compensation system. The reality is that on average, 15 workers are injured at work every single day. And every two weeks, a worker dies on the job or because of their job. One of the priorities we have highlighted is the need for presumptive compensation coverage for essential workers who contract COVID-19 directly or indirectly through their work. We've been meeting with government and MHAs about the importance of worker safety along with public safety during the pandemic, especially with PPE and paid sick days for all workers. Workers should never have to choose between going to work sick or feeding their families or working without the proper PPE. Our Federation, along with your union and others, supported the 1,400 workers who were on strike against Loblaws. It's shameful that one of the richest families in Canada who made record profits during the pandemic would treat their workers in such an unjust way by taking away full-time work and benefits and making most of their own workforce unable to afford to buy the groceries they sold to the rest of us to keep us fed. These courageous workers have gone back to work now, but we will continue to fight against this type of exploitation by pushing for stronger labor laws, including a $15 minimum wage. 
Our work at the Federation is in the political arena, and this is a very important time for us to take the lessons we have learned from this pandemic and think about the type of society that we find ourselves in and what we can do about that to ensure that we look after each other and our planet. It's also apparent that we have an awful lot of hard work ahead of us. We will need to roll up our sleeves and make sure we are heard. Our new premier has been quite open that we need to do things differently, that the economic status quo is no longer acceptable. We agree with that statement and we have many suggestions about how we move forward. Governments have refused to pay attention to the deterioration of working conditions over many years for many workers, and most especially the growing rise of workers who have no protection. We have asked to work with government and others to set our province on a course towards recovery post COVID-19 by investing in the basic building blocks of society. We have much to contribute to the discussion. We know that returning to what we had pre-pandemic will not give us a pathway to a strong economy that the people of Newfoundland and Labrador need and deserve. To be perfectly clear though, we will fight against any budget or recovery plan that does not put the interest of workers and public services first. We know that physical and mental health and social determinants of health are directly linked to each other and that stable jobs, stable and healthy communities and our environment are all linked to personal health. Florence Nightingale said, it may seem a strange principle to enunciate as the very first requirement in a hospital that it should do the sick no harm. Our job is to ensure that government listens to what you and other healthcare workers have been saying about getting back to that requirement. We could have never weathered the pandemic storm without you, nor can we build, rebuild our economy without you. A strong public sector and quality public services, especially public health care, long-term care and home care, can quite frankly ensure our communities, our province and our country can continue to ride the waves and this and any other future crisis and can look after the well-being of all of us. Our vision for an economy that works for all of us is one that is rich in good jobs for all, that invests in a strong public sector and quality public services, that supports families and communities and respects our environment. Our priorities for a strong economy and for a worker-centered economy and economic recovery start from our vision. We have presented this to government and we will continue to push towards that very vision. I have heard your leadership say that we have to hold politicians accountable, that we can't stand for a government who is destroying our healthcare system and nurses. We need to be present and watch and listen to what politicians are saying. Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Now is the time to have those crucial conversations. I'm ready for that, and I know you are too. I have hope that together we can build a healthier, safer, and more sustainable world. A world where no one is left behind. The pandemic didn't cause all the inequality and gaps in our society, but it sure exposed them. The silver lining in all of this is that it has sparked us all to demand better. We can rebuild our economy. We deserve no less. Thank you for continuing to inspire my work and for your amazing leadership. Have a great convention. Solidarity. Thank you, Mary, uh, for that great presentation and um, lots of key messages there in terms of the work that has already been done and the work still ahead. And um, I'm confident uh, that we have all the great tools around us with uh, strong leadership at the Federation of Labor level. And uh, I see good things in the future and influencing uh, decisions 
that government might may make.